Hey everybody, welcome to Ochki Chop. My name is Shahan and today we'll be making Basurma. Basurma is essentially a cured meat item similar to prosciutto or copa. We're gonna salt it and then actually flavor it with fenugreek, cumin, garlic, paprika, and a little bit of cayenne. So today we're gonna be using eye of round. You can traditionally use tenderloin, ribeye, anything really that has like a nice center cut to it can be used to make basidma. In this case, it's gonna be a little bit leaner just because it comes from a leaner part of the cow, but we're gonna pack it with flavor, so we shouldn't be worried about that. So we're gonna just trim this piece of meat. Um, there's a lot of silver skin on it and sinew, so you don't really want that. It'll kind of toughen up on you once this is a finished product, so we're just gonna clean it up. So once the meat is trimmed up and cleaned, uh, we're actually gonna use a scale to weigh it out in grams, so we know the exact percentage of salt we're gonna use to cure the actual beef. So this piece of meat weighs about 1,400 grams. We're gonna be using 2.7% of that in salt to cure it, so that's about 38.5 grams of salt altogether. Make sure the salt you're using is something high quality and make sure it's a sea salt as well. So I'm gonna put my meat in the curing pan that we're gonna use. So this might seem like a lot of salt to put on uh, some beef, but what we're actually trying to do is extract all the moisture from the beef so that way we have a nice dry product that's not gonna rot on us. So once you have the salt rubbed into the meat itself, we're gonna put it and wrap it in some plastic. Uh, there's always gonna be some excess salt that doesn't make it onto the meat itself. Just try to collect it as best as you can and pour it right on top. Flipping again one more time. Now we're gonna tightly wrap this up in order to kind of hold all the salt in there. Try to get as much air out of it as possible. Once your beef is wrapped up in the plastic, we're gonna put it into a pan with a little bit of a lip on it. Remember, this is gonna leach out a lot of liquid. The next step is we're gonna take like a cast iron pan, something heavy, and place it right on top of the meat. This will help push out all the excess liquid and we're gonna weigh it down with any sort of household object. You know, if you're a workout aficionado like I am, you might wanna use five pound dumbbells. Just kidding, I never work out. <laughs> uh, we're gonna leave this just like this and put it into our fridge for about seven days, flipping once every day. We'll be back in seven days for the next step. And we're ready to remove the salt uh, so we can start drying it. Just simply rinse off the salt from the meat using cold water and pat dry. Make sure this is as dry as possible. It'll help with the dehydration process that we're gonna be going into next. We're gonna go ahead and apply the chemin on there. And all the chemin really is, is a spice kit that helps flavor and marinate the meat. Chemin actually just means fenugreek, uh, but it also kind of means the entire spice kit itself. So as I said, fenugreek up here in front of us, paprika, garlic powder, cumin, Aleppo pepper, some cayenne, allspice, and black pepper. So you just mix it all together. We're gonna add a little bit of clean distilled or filtered water to create a nice thick paste. So now we're gonna apply our nice thick paste onto our dried beef. Remember, you want a nice generous layer of this. We are not done curing this. There's still another 150 to 200 grams of drying left to go. And yes, the chemin will add a little bit of weight to that, but it should be kind of negligible at, in the final weight of it all. Try to apply the paste as evenly as possible not leaving any gaps where the meat is exposed. I'm using a glove mainly because the fenugreek has a really strong smell to it that can kind of stick onto your hands a couple of days later. So yeah, just take care or else you'll be smelling like fenugreek for a little bit. Now that we've applied a healthy spread of the chemin onto the basinma, we're actually gonna go ahead and tie it up and hang it back in our fridge to finish off the drying process. This should take another roughly about a week or so, again, depending on the temperature and humidity in your own fridge or wherever you're drying this. You don't wanna get your twine too tight onto the meat itself so it doesn't cut a seam <coughs> where the chemin should be. 
Um, we're just gonna really loosely tie this and hang it up. I do have some leftover chemin as well. That is gonna go back onto the basurma once we've tied it up, just to patch up any little holes or parts of the meat that are still exposed. As you guys can see, the chemin has been generously applied. We've trussed it. I have a little hook here that I'm gonna use to put onto the rack in the fridge that I have. And we're gonna keep drying this now till we drop about 30% of its original start weight. That's gonna be our marker uh, so we can know when it's ready to go. We have a separate fridge that we're going to be drying this in. Uh, we've put in a few different amenities into the fridge to help us with the drying process. One is a fan, the other one is a bowl of water. And we have also raised the temperature in the fridge to about roughly 50 degrees Fahrenheit. The reason we put a bowl of water in there is we're trying to keep a relative humidity of about 70 to 75 percent. This will give us optimal drying speed compared to how dry the actual bostema might get. You want to avoid the meat hardening on the outside before it dries the inside. So the slower the process, the better. So guys, here we have our Bostonma, a uh, very much a finished product. This has been going now for about four weeks since we started. Remember, this has dropped 30% of its original weight, so it should be ready to go. So we're gonna slice it into it and see how it came out. So here we have the finished product, our cured and finished basurma. So you can see a little bit of a dark ring around it. That's where it's been really drying the most, while in the middle it's a little bit softer uh, and almost more red and fresh, which is totally fine. I ended up slicing this with a knife, which is a little bit difficult. You might want to actually have access to a, some sort of a slicer so you can get nice, thin, even pieces with this. And you can enjoy this in just about any which way you would enjoy any other deli meat or salami, either in a sandwich, uh, you could cook this with some eggs, which would be really good, or you could just put it on a board with some bread and tomatoes and whatnot and just enjoy it like a, like a little charcuterie board. And there you guys have it, this is the Boston Mall. Thank you guys for watching us uh, make Boston Mall over the course of the last three to four weeks. If you like what you see, please click like and hit subscribe and we'll see you guys next time.